Devin and his crew have reached the upstairs level of the corrugated metal siding. And right now they're doing J channels around all the windows, all the way around. And the upper part around are beams that stick out in preparation for the metal to go in. One discussion point here though, is these lights. Um, we don't want to mount these lights to that corrugated wavy metal. So our thought so far is that we're going to pull this off, place a two by four thickness block here, let him wrap that completely in metal, then J channel all the way around that. And luckily this fell like on the seam on both sides of a panel. So he can slide in from this side, slide in from that side behind the J channel. If that was right in the middle, you oh. can't really do that because the J channel is larger than the hole you have I to cut, right? I don't know how you would do it. I'm <laughs> yeah. so confused. And that's why these guys are here. I still, I thought, okay, I'm finally going to figure this out when I watch them put it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be definitely, it'd definitely be more difficult if yeah. it wasn't on this, you know, seam of the middle. So. See, he knows he could do it, but he won't tell me how. That's because you, <laughs> you won't hire him if you know how to do it. <laughs> he knows how we work. Stick around and see uh. <laughs> Man, something is not right. Oh. Is this supposed to do that? What in the world? I'm fighting the truck if I were you. All right, this is, uh, ah! Okay, there we go. So, Jamie's trying to drill down the thickness of one of those pancake boxes, which is a half inch thick, maybe? I think a little more, even. Um, and then we'll chisel that out. What? What are you doing? Oh, man, this is my first time, sorry. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting it now. I think, I think I got it. Dude, is this thing bent? The, yeah, the- Oh, the middle the, the bit. Middle bit is bent. Ah, okay, that makes sense. See how deep we're getting there. That might be enough, what do you think? Um, I was gonna use this as a gauge right there. Yeah. It's about a half. If you ever have to drill a big hole like that, <clears throat> it's a good idea to drill it before you cut a little puck off the end and have to hold on to that while you drill it, it's insane. A little bit of a wild ride there. Yeah. Yo, you trying to be me or what? <laughs> I think that'll hold it. Is that level? Yeah, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> it doesn't look level on the camera, I can tell you that, but kind of skewed here. Oh, uh, looks good. I think we're good. Let the electrician figure that out. Jason just started in installing the door handles in the hardware, and he is pre-drilling for all of these tiny screws that hold the latch plate and the catch plate so that they're centered. He's just doing it by eye with a tiny bit. They do make these self-centering bits, and we even have one here where you put this collar into the hole, and then as you push, the drill bit becomes exposed, perfectly centered in the hole. But this one's way too big and we don't have one the right size. So let me ask you this, is there a way to know if it's gonna catch or not before I put this piece in? I would shut the door and watch from the inside. So if you come in here, and that way you know if you need to adjust that plate up or down just to fuzz, there's usually a little wiggle room. Or in and out just to fuzz, there's usually a little wiggle room. So uh, you're hitting low. Dude, who drilled that hole? Holy crap. Uh, it looks like the went nuts with the router. So we need to chisel out the hole a little lower <clears throat> so you're sure that that catches in the hole. Yeah. And then shut it and see how much wiggle room you have in and out mm -hmm. to know how far in to slide that thing. So you're saying all that material needs to go bye-bye. That's what I would say. In the past, we've cut out that little section for the latch with like a chisel or something that's kind of a pain. 
Jason had the great off. idea to cut down the width of an oscillating tool blade to very narrow so that you could just get in there and hack a little slot out or hack the section out. And Jamie already had one. I have it. I have it. <laughs> It's so awesome, dude. Don't I mentioned about like a small blade to cut it. Dude, his eyes got so big. He was like a little kid. He's like, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I see him. I, see. I already have them. I have like three it. of these. I just have never found a purpose for them. This will be perfect. Until now. I can't wait to see this happen. Dude, mm. this is going to be great. Okay, that did it. The reason we're doing all this fidgeting around with the catch plate is that the door won't shut properly if you don't kind of do this precise work. I've had so many doors in houses that I've bought the house that the door didn't even shut at all. Like it didn't catch, like the, the latch totally missed the latch plate or it was really loose or too tight. So um, it's not a matter of just bolting this thing in here exactly where it looks like it should go. I think there's a lot of fine tuning that needs to be done to make sure each door works like as perfectly as it can. Is the door you're working on good? Like yeah. everything lines up? Yeah. You know who hung that door? Me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> who? It was me. It was you? Yeah. That door? Yeah. Yep. Huh. Uh, I actually cut some off the bottom of that leg of the jam so that everything lined up. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, just barely. Oh, no, no, no. you said it was good already. <laughs> In the case that we put it in too loose, we could take this off and bend this tab. That way, still a fuzz to tighten it up. That's a lot. That's something that a lot of people yeah. don't know. And most of these have a little notch in them where you can hook a flathead and just bend it out. This one, we'd have to take it off and bend it. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's not. It's too high. It might be too high. Too high. Okay. So it didn't shut because it's too high and it looks flush with our wood, but it's like a, a fingernail above it. I don't want to have to try to move this because the screws will go back into the same screw hole. So we need to pull this plate off and we need to file that this down. little bottom part like an eighth of an inch off. Wow. Yep. We've made our adjustments. Checking it again. All right. <laughs> One done. Perfect. Nice. Okay. So let's go to the house. <laughs> We're done. We're out of here. We usually stick these little unlock things on top of the door like that for the homeowner. And that way if a kid gets locked in there by accident, boom, you can get them out. Last thing here is I did touch up this filed edge with a Sharpie. And that should never wear off because the latch doesn't touch it. So it looks mm. perfect. It looks good. And nothing ever happened. There you go. We're down here with the guys that are going to do the sealed crawl space. And I was down here with Nate the other day. Yeah. We saw the spot where the spider Look at this. Had, uh, had gotten hit right there. And <laughs> we were just talking about that. And then we looked down and what do you know? Look at that. There he That's is. Bad, He's right there. He's encapsulated. <laughs> Still so, there. He's going to be there for a while. Yeah. I'm not going to touch him. <laughs> we did check on our drain here with the inspector. And they said that that was fine. Since it's at the low point of our foundation, should drain water out. And I think it will. These guys are installing a heavy duty vapor barrier to seal the crawl space. Since there's no venting in this crawl space, it was meant to be sealed better than your average like six mil vapor barrier that's just laid down. So this will be taped at the seams, taped to the wall. And they're not going all the way up the wall because of the drop trusses. We did a roll on sort of membrane on the block up high so they could just tape to that. They're using this powder actuated Hilti nailer and it's way quieter than ours. Oh, they got a Hilti. Yeah, but it's like silent. Hmm. Um, our powder actuated guns are like, boom. <laughs> sounds like a bomb going Yeah, off. and this thing sounds like a stapler. It's like, <laughs> so that's cool. the wrong one, man. I know. 
Today's video sponsor is Eufy Security, and I have their battery camera that has ultra 4K HD video, runs on a 4G network or on Wi-Fi, and has a solar charger, so it basically has endless power. And I gotta mention that this solar panel is really nice. It uses Solar Plus technology that reaches 25% photovoltaic conversion efficiency, and it needs just 2,500 lux to charge, 75% less than the usual 10,000 lux. Now, my plan for this camera is to take it down to the lake property, face it towards the dock from a tree in the woods so I can see my boat, pretty expensive asset I wanna keep my eyes on, and also the dock and the stuff on the dock. Actually, someone stole our umbrella off the dock this winter. This would also make a great job site security camera because you can mount it way up in a tree out of sight and you don't have to have power to keep it running. Here's some of the specs on this camera. The 4.5 watt solar panel needs just two hours of sunlight a day to keep it powered, which is not much. But with optimal sunlight, the solar panel can collect in store 1400 milliamps per day. And that's about three times the average usage for a 24 hour period for the camera. As I mentioned, the Eufy has dual connectivity with 4G and Wi-Fi. So if you're near Wi-Fi, like at your house, you can use that network. But if you're not, if you're way out in the woods at a lake or at a job site, you can use a 4G network. And it's also compatible with Homebase S380 in Wi-Fi mode. The included three-in-one SIM card is compatible with AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. And what really makes this camera great is it has 4K UHD and eight times zoom. So if someone is on your property, you can zoom way in and see that person's face or see details that you couldn't see on other cameras. The camera head itself moves on this thing and it can even track using AI on specific things that you tell it. It can also send you alerts through the app so it's fully featured and you can even use the sound and light alarm. It has a hundred lumen spotlight and sound so that you can detour threats just using your app from afar. So if you're looking for local security with no monthly fees that you can take anywhere and use anywhere, make sure to click the link down in our video description below the video, and that'll take you where you need to go to get your own Eufy camera. Thank you guys for sponsoring our video. We really appreciate it. Let's get back to work. I think I'm gonna put up a sign that says, take your shoes off at the door. It's white, so it'll show dirt, but it's also very expensive. <laughs> and I don't wanna punch a hole in it or something by accident. Uh, even if you were like working and dropped your knife and cut it, you know? Switching gears here and I'm cutting this wallpaper, which is self-adhesive and it's gonna be part of the backsplash with these tiles at the bottom. Oh yeah, it's, it's fun, that's fun. Try it on. I to start all over. Wow, <laughs> look at this. I thought that was gonna get the best of me for a minute. We've got the upper part of our backsplash installed and that was quite literally like putting a giant screen protector on a phone without getting a bubble in it. This is gonna be the bottom and we're just gonna stick them with no grout joint with Lexel. We also don't want like any gap because there's no saluter or outside edge. So this will ensure they're nice and tight. Oh yeah, that's plenty. That looks pretty centered, three and a half. Man, this is my kind of tiling right here. If we could just tile Lexel all tile from now on, no grout joints. This would not work in a situation where you had to stop like water from coming through because there's no, no grout in the joints. But for what we're doing here, this is magic. Blue. Four more and then I'll cut the side ones tomorrow. A little grinder action on that thing she cut. That's what I like. Jamie's marked where the sink cutout is on the cabinet. And I think you gotta cut back a little more even, right? I do. This is the clip that's gonna hold the sink in. And I don't think it's long enough to capture this additional three quarter inch thickness. So I think I need to cut back from this line about a quarter. But I, I mean, we don't have a whole ton here left. I really am a little scared of <laughs> chewing away too much of that. 
What about in the back, the same thing? Yeah, I'm not worried about the back too much. Um, as a matter of fact, I could probably just cut that straight across. Yeah, I'll just, and just cut. let that fall out. Yeah, there's a screw there. Well, and on this side, I oh, can't, can't get the screw. I can't, I can't get uh, it. Uh, Jason has a special way to take those out, though. Don't you? All right, we're in. Super nice. In case you missed it in a previous video, we're putting this Emmett's Good Stuff wood finish on the countertops. It's food safe, that's why we're using it. And we're doing three coats plus on the top. We're doing a little light sand in between. And we did do a coat on the bottom of all these before we installed them. I think they're done in there. We're gonna check it out. Okie dokie, let's see. I'm breaking the rules, I got my shoes on. <laughs> uh oh, he's still working. <laughs> Get oh, he's sealing it to the wall. Okay. Yep. Look at there. It's got a special uh, kind of adhesive or something. It must just stick to the back of the stuff. Yeah. Did you look at the back of this stuff? Yeah. You did. Yeah. It's like um, it's almost like the Landscape soft fabric. side of the uh, of Velcro. Almost. Yeah. It's kind of yeah woven. Which is nice. It doesn't slide. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, It yeah. looks totally sterile in here, like a operating room or something. It does. Um, wow. And they didn't, I guess they didn't have to use any of the uh, stakes or nothing because no. that would make a lot of holes in it. So yeah. that's, that's good. Look around the legs of this. He was under here. Oh, no way. Crawling around. <laughs> Sealed around all of those. Very nice. We do need to cut our pipe out if they didn't do oh. it. Oh, did they not? No. Oh, they, yeah. You need yeah. to do that and tape. Do you have any more of that tape? Wow. So we could, do you mind to leave a little bit? Like, just in case we make a tear or something? Yeah. You might have a future in crawl space. Uh, you see that? Like, yeah. Oh man, I know. I feel right at home already doing this. I don't know that I've ever seen a crawl space so clean and smelling good. Yeah. I would sleep down here. And bright. And bright. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> we're back at the job this morning and we're doing a little gutter work. This gutter here doesn't have a real downspout because that's not what the homeowner wanted. She wanted this rain chain with cups. <laughs> there you go. The rain just goes through the cups and down to a ground box, we'll call it. Collection box and into this pipe. And that pipe comes out way down there. So it's a pretty complicated system, but it looks better than having this gutter downspout right here. So we're gonna see if we can make it happen. I knew that was going around your neck. <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> Well, as far as I know, the first step is to Lexel this piece of, uh, it's like a funnel in here. It's a copper piece. And what it does is it kind of covers the square area where your downspout is and funnels it down to like a two inch round diameter. Now all the water has to go inside of that. It can't go around that or the function of this thing is not gonna work good. It's gonna be leaking everywhere. It's like a rain a waterfall. Then It'd just be a rain whatever. So um, I think that part is accomplished. And actually um, there's Lexel, there's so much Lexel in that I was trying to squeeze it down, but I think actually by hanging the chain, it's gonna kind of permanently like clamp it. Yeah. You see? I actually want to pour a bunch of water in here so we Do can you? see it or something. We can just- It's gonna be sort of non-climactic if we can't see water going down these cups. You keep my ladder where it goes. <laughs> I got your ladder. I got so your ladder. So this is a little bit of a reach on this ladder where we can get it. So Jamie's got oh, come on. two no, guys like me? holding his jacket and his pants so he doesn't okay. fall off Yeah, yeah, hold, hold me. I got you. Hold me. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Oh, yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> wow. No, well, we did that. confirm that the hole we dug is in the exact right spot because this went directly in the center of it. I got it. I got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to get this to stop swinging so we can um, dead center this thing on the drain box. We thought we had a dead center, <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> There you go, take care of that for no, me. No, get that thing away from me. <laughs> Just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we've got one of these spare parts looped through the grate here, and I was just gonna leave it loose, but Jay Jason's like gonna lose his mind. Seriously. So yeah, just wrap that around there a little better. We've got everything buried and we're gonna give it a test run. Hit it. Easy. Um, you know, you can just spray it up on the roof. I did. <laughs> All right, let's see what's happening down here. It's working pretty good. It looks like. Wow. Oh, there it goes. All the way down to the bottom now. Uh, like... I would say most of it's going into the grate. Coming over the side of the ramp, garbage of the gutters. I'll have to give it credit for working better than I thought. Let's see if it's coming out down here. Is the plan? I don't know how this isn't coming out of here yet. Oh, there, there it comes. I was like, wow. Okay, it works. I was actually impressed um, to see it kind of streaming straight down. Yeah, that um, was my first ever rain chain installation. That's right. <laughs> we do get caught up doing a bunch of these random weird projects near the end of a job because who are you going to hire to come out here, way out here, and just install a rain no, chain? Nobody. The, the gutter guy doesn't even want to do it. Yeah. So, and hey, did you say why we didn't use a regular downspout? Did sort you, of. It just... it. It's mostly the look of it. Yeah. That's all. We could have put one, but it wouldn't be as beautiful. Right. Or it would have to go down next to the house and through the deck. That's right. Which also yes. would not be beautiful. Oh, well, and this is a very small area of roof that contributes water to this gutter. Right. All right. All right. So it's a literally, a, what, an 8 by 8 or 8 by 10? Roof surface. Yeah, it's yeah. very small. And so I don't recommend a rain chain, I don't think, for anything large. Yeah, like this run of gutter right here, yeah. that rain chain would be overwhelmed. That go pretty quickly. That downspout is gonna be full of water. <laughs> have you seen the rain chain? So it have like about three eighths inch copper chain. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like huge, and oh. like it just comes down like a hose. It's, it's huh. pretty impressive. Yeah, you gotta have a good catch or a, yeah. like a gravel basin yeah. or something, yeah, something or but, wash yeah. a hole in the ground. I mean, it's it's like a logging chain bigger than yeah. that. Wow. And, and uh, they, it's weird. They hold huh. it. It's like it's yeah, water control off of gutters is a huge yeah. deal. Um, in a lot of cases, like here on backfill, big deal, big deal. You don't want this backfill getting saturated against a wall, especially if it's living space below, which it's not here. This one, not so much. Like this water is gonna hit the ground and run away from the house anyway. Yep. Um, so I do like being involved in making sure water is doing the right thing around the house as a builder. I think it's like <laughs> probably the most important thing about it's, a house is that water goes yeah. away from it. It's hard to convince water to do the right thing sometimes, <laughs> you know? <laughs>